liturgy for holy baptism begins on page 299 of the Book of Common Prayer. <clears throat> Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father. The Lord be with you, and also with you, let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 118, which we will read responsibly at full verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die for good, the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter. I will give all the thanks to the Lord. This is a gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he also appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, 
because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Son of the Holy Spirit, amen. (laughs) 
Something must have been missing when the bishop ordained me because I don't know how to remember or tell jokes, which many clergy do quite well, and I don't have a whole supply of sort of heartwarming stories. Except, except, every once in a while. I have a story that was passed on to me by my seminary roommate, and I don't know whether he made it up or got it from someone else. But there's some truth in it. So, let's say this came from another priest who told my seminary roommate who told me. So, some years ago, a woman told me that her great-grandson asked why she had so many wrinkles on her hands. She said to him, I'm old. My younger brother, who's only six years younger than I, whenever I complain about something anymore, says, well, you're old. Thanks a lot. He'll be older, too. Do you know what happens when you get old, the boy asked, and then went on to answer his own question. You die, and they bury you in the ground. Before his great-grandmother could say anything, he added, but that's all right, because God comes and unburies you. There might not be a whole lot more to say about that, except people usually expect me to say something more than just that. But that boy kind of told the Easter story, very quickly, very simply. It's not all of it, but it's certainly a big part of it. There are, let's say, several aspects to the business of resurrection. <clears throat> About this time every year, on some of my more religious Facebook groups, someone will post something that says something like, clergy who do not believe in the absolute bodily resurrection of Jesus from the dead should be cast out by their bishops into outer darkness, where men and women weep and gnash their teeth. And some people go, yeah, yeah, that's really how it is. And others argue a little. So there's the bodily resurrection of Jesus, which we proclaim every week when we gather. In the creeds, St. Paul gives wonderful reasons, good reasons, for why if there's no resurrection, we have no reason to be here. And I am not God. God is God. So God can raise people from the dead any way God wants to, and we proclaim that Jesus has been raised from the dead, and we will be too. The second part has to do with more than Jesus dying on the cross and being raised and our sins being forgiven so that someday we'll get into heaven too. It has to do with the circumstances of our lives right now and how we live our lives, and how we get through our lives, and what our lives mean, so that we can proceed through life with and in hope and thanksgiving. It is very easy for people to get buried by the circumstances of their lives. It is very easy, because things happen. And yet, we proclaim, week by week, God unburies us. So that over and over, God comes to the tombs of our lives and unburies us, which is the extended meaning of Easter, if you will. It is the power and love of God, and it is as true as it is simple. That truth, in the end, we believe speaks louder than the reality of our burials. Because there are so many ways in which the circumstances of life seem to bury us. Sorrow and grief when people we love die and they're buried. Death and loss, fear and anxiety. Perfectionism, anger, guilt, regret, resentment, self-hatred. Think of things, there probably are more, that leave people feeling buried. The things that we have done and the things that we have left undone. So that, if you will, those are the stones that block our way in life. The stones that block our way. And those stones mark the many ways in which we have suffered death, whether physical death or emotional and spiritual death. I've not had to face physical death myself, that is, of me. I've faced many physical, many physical deaths of many people over the years. So I don't know what it will be like for me, but I'm convinced that for many people in life, there are worse kinds of death than physical death. 
emotional, spiritual. And so with each stone, we ask, who will roll away the stone? Each tomb, each stone, who will roll it away? Who will do for me what I cannot do for myself? That's really what the three women going to the tomb this morning, Easter morning, are asking as they walk along. Who will roll away the stone? Who will do something that I cannot do for myself? And it's not just a question. It is a kind of statement about their life and what they may expect. Because their life, because they love Jesus, has been buried in loss and pain and death. And if they are like, maybe, I don't know, 90% of human beings, maybe not that many, maybe more, then when caught in something like that, they find it easy to say, as we may, this is how it is. Nothing is ever going to change. Somebody died. I'm full of grief. Nothing is ever going to change. This is how it will be the rest of my life. And I've done that myself. Sometimes for things that in retrospect seemed like, well, yeah, that was probably a reasonable fear. And other times I think, yeah, well, you talked yourself into that. But that's what happens. Those women expect a stone of death too big, too heavy, too real for them to do anything about. But, but we proclaim. And if we don't, then why are we here? We proclaim that for every burial, there is an Easter. In our lives, that Easter, that resurrection may not come immediately, exactly when we want it to. And yet, for every burial, there is always the hope that there is an Easter. And that's what the women discovered. As soon as they looked up, that stone, the stone of death that had blocked their way, had already been rolled back so that they did not have to rely on their own strength, which at that point did not feel so strong. I could be wrong. It's happened before. But besides the fact that sometimes people show up in church on Easter morning because there's a baptism, or because they think they should because it's Easter, or because someone says, will you please go to church with me on Easter? That all that business of resurrection and new life and somebody doing something for us that we cannot do for ourselves and stones being rolled away is why we show up on this day year after year. So that no matter how skeptical some people may be, or how full to overflowing of belief and faith others are, we want to know that the stones of our tombs have been rolled back. We want to hear the story again and again and be reminded that the tomb is open and empty. We want to know ourselves as unburied, unburied, like that kid said. So that we want to hear one more time Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Even if we don't have all the mechanics of resurrection figured out because we're not God, but we are who we are. St. Paul says that he is who he is. Thanks be to God through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so that is who we are. And we proclaim every Sunday when people gather together, every Sunday is really a celebration of what some people call a little Easter. It's a kind of little Easter because every Sunday celebration is a celebration of the resurrection. And so day by day, week by week, year by year, we proclaim that Christ is risen. There are indeed sacred words of hope and life and resurrection from God. We are or we can be a new people. And sometimes, amazingly enough, that happens because there are other new people around us. Because most of us could not get through life all on our own. Those women needed 
to have somebody roll the stone away. And it was rolled away. And then they were spoken to there. Why are you looking for him here? Which sounds a little rude in a way. Well, what are you doing here? But still, they needed to be told that the stone was rolled away, Jesus had risen, and they had to move on. They had to move on. They could not stay stuck in that place. They had to move on. So I would say to all of us this morning, to myself as well as to other people, think about the stones that you have found in your way in life. Christ is risen and they are removed. And we say they are removed. I know we're not supposed to write in the passive voice, but we say that they are removed because someone else has done it. Or at the very least in our lives has helped us do it as other people of faith and hope gather around us. And we might think of all the people we have loved who have died. Christ is risen, and they are unburied. And we could think of all the things we have done and left undone. Sometimes we call those sins. Christ is risen, and we are forgiven. So that, and there are sometimes theological debates about this, are we or are we not worthy to stand before God? Or do we always have to pray on our knees because we are always unworthy? Well, let's just say that at least for today, at least for today, maybe through all of Easter week, maybe through the whole season of Easter, maybe at times when we are surprised that, well, we might stand before God. We might stand before God because Christ is risen and you and I are loved. Removed, unburied, forgiven, loved. These are God's Easter words to us, not just today, but every day. God has been speaking and bringing to life words of salvation, hope, love, joy to God's people from the very beginning of creation, from the very beginning, when we were created in God's image and likeness, when God, long before Jesus, but when God in and through Moses and presumably the power of God's Spirit parted the waters of the Red Sea. Easter words were spoken. We'll use that language. It's not Easter yet, but let's say Easter words were spoken. That sort of crazy prophet Ezekiel stood in the valley of the dry bones and spoke to the bones so that they would gap and dance around and not just be dry bones because God needed the people of God to be alive. In some way, whatever he said were Easter words. We can use that language everywhere and no matter what, and Easter never ends. In just a few moments, God will enact words of life and profound regard for all of us, the profound regard and love that God has for us in the baptism of Madison Joy. What a wonderful middle name, especially for a baptism, and on Easter morning. We're not going to immerse her, though if we were in the first or second century of the church's life, we probably would, but we will witness Madison's burial, so to speak, in the baptismal waters of death. We don't know whether she'll like it or not, or whether she'll say anything. I think in all my years of baptizing people, I've only had one kid that really screamed, and it didn't last for very long. She will be buried and unburied and made a new creation in Christ. As we look at her today, all day long, if we've already looked at her, and then after her baptism, and maybe at coffee hour, and wherever we see her, whether we are her family and friends right up here or people on the farthest reaches of the congregation, as we look at her, just see her life. Right now, she is full of innocence. There are days when I wish that I were too, but too late now. 
Think of the possibilities, all that might be, the love, the beauty, the goodness that's already there, but will continue to grow and be magnified as she grows in wisdom and stature and favor with God and all of us. She is a mirror of your unburied life and mine. So if you think about her and see her, even if you're not your family or closest friends, but still think about her, think of every child you have ever seen baptized. For that matter, think of yourself, even if you weren't conscious enough to know what was being done to you, think about the very best hopes and prayers that you might have for her, that you've had for other people who were baptized, that you still have for yourself because you're still alive and you're not in the tomb and stones have been rolled away. We can name all those hopes and prayers for Madison, and they are the same hopes and prayers Christ has for you. In the midst of life, which sometimes is hard as it was for those women, but, but, the unburied life comes to us in a thousand different ways, besides in baptism, you overcome, let us say, bitterness and anger, reconciling with another person. That's life unburied. I feel the presence of a loved one who has died, but I wasn't even thinking about him or her. That is life unburied. Perhaps we are able to look at the world and weep with compassion for its pain. That is life unburied. Maybe somewhere down the line you respond to another person's harsh words or actions with forgiveness rather than with your own harsh actions or words. That's life unburied. You love without fear. We love without fear. Holding nothing in reserve. Offering all that we are and all that we have to somebody or some bodies. That is life unburied. That is resurrection. That's the ongoing kind of resurrection. That's the part of resurrection that is not just Jesus being raised from the dead and us being raised from the dead when we're dead. That's the part of resurrection that is alive now. Life unburied. So life unburied always presents itself as a new creation. So it is that the women in today's gospel go to the tomb on the first day of the week, which was the day creation began. The first day, Sunday, the first day of the week, the day creation began. Everything is being made new. The sun has risen. For those women, it is the dawn of a new day, declaring that the sun, capital S-O-N, has risen. And if Christ is risen, then so are we. And as St. Paul says over and over, and if we're risen, then so is Christ. And if Christ is risen, then we're risen, and we are full of hope. This new day is also our day, the day of the holy and unburied people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. We will continue on page 301 of the prayer book. The congregation may remain, remain seated at this point. And I say to you all, the candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. And here she is. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? We will, with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? We will, with God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? We renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? 
we renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? We renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? We do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? We do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? We do. do. And to the congregation, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this person in her life in Christ? We We will. will. Let us join with her who is committing herself to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. And will you stand? Do you believe in God the Father? I I believe believe in in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people, and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Let us now pray for this person who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill Madison Joy with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach Madison to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send her into the world and witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. not immersing her, but we can make a lot of a mess. We can make a mess. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We thank you, almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever 
in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Madison Joy, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, my goodness. There you are. You get a little bit of it off. A little bit. Anyway. All right. Madison Joy, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. And on page 308, let us together welcome the newly baptized. We, we receive, receive you into, into the, the household of God, of God. confess the faith of Christ crucified, crucified. proclaim his resurrection, and, and share with us in his eternal kingdom. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Oh my God, peace. Peace, peace to you. I'm probably going to bore people with this, but I'm still so amazed by it that on April 14th, 1990, I baptized Lindsay. So, it's amazing. We have coffee hour after church. There is a huge cake in there and other food besides. So uh, please do stay as long as you can and help us eat. We need help. We need help. Um, please also know that all <coughs> baptized Christians are welcome to receive communion. Um, if you do not want to receive communion, you may come up for a blessing or you may just stay where you are when the time comes. So. Ascribe to the Lord the honor of his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We live them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you, to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. claim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you. And through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, 
Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand and awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup, we praise you and we bless you. We, we praise, praise you, you, we bless you, we, we give thanks to you, and we, we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. gluten-free wafer, we have gluten-free wafers. And if there's someone in the congregation who is not able to get up to the front, I can uh, bring communion out to people also, as need be.
Using the post-communion prayer on page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.